Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unpopular View. Thank you all for clicking on our faces. Two fly with all that. Okay, so I wrote down some notes. Let's have to do that. I don't want to sit too hard. Time. That's why right. that'll probably go over about as well as Colonel Bibby. Because there was no Jay White sighting. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> just straight up gang banging. This story has been fit. Right, you got to pay that attention. So Unpopular Review does not. What is your CEO of Chris? Jesus, golly. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to another edition of Unpopular Reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be reviewing none other than the Disney classic Jamaican Cool Runnings. Check it out. Looking for a sponsor for the first Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> Their dream was to compete in the Olympics. <laughs> but they chose a sport. <laughs> they knew nothing about. This is the true story of four unlikely athletes. How about I beat your butt right now? How about I draw a line down the middle of your head so it looks like a butt? Who weren't prepared for what they were about to face. It's a beautiful afternoon in Calgary. And they took the whole world along for the ride. Woo! Used to follow your dreams. Follow, follow your, your dreams. dreams. Cool runnings, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm being joined by the rest of the team, the, to the Thursday team, ladies and gentlemen, the executive consultant and Mr. Triple X, Mike Knox. So <laughs> this was quite a good movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm going to start by saying um, the concept of a jamaican bobsled team is just crazy to me i remember seeing the commercials for this movie when it came out in the early 90s and i gotta be honest like i was always interested in watching it always interested in watching it but never ever had the opportunity and the one thing that i certainly forgot until the very beginning of this movie is that it was a disney movie I completely forgot that this was a Disney movie, um, which is great because after watching this movie, this is something I would definitely show to um, the younger audience um, because I like the story. I like everything that 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 went on. Um, and the other thing that I that I I certainly can appreciate um, is, man, do I miss John Candy. I really do. John Candy really was um, a great actor. The guy died way before his time. I haven't seen a John Candy movie in a long time. And um, watching him in this movie just made, made me miss him. Like, clearly, it's not some of his best work. But just seeing the guy and seeing him do a bunch of stuff in here was great. So, you know, the main thing is, it's just that you have these group of Jamaicans that are starting that are basically starting to um, to figure out their way into the Olympics. And long story short, end up trying to go for track and field, right? But then one of them trips and then trips about three other people and then, bam, they lose their opportunity to go to the Olympics and other people do for running for running, you know, but then all of a sudden there's a swerve. There's a swerve. And then there's like, Hey, there's a guy that's like, Hey, sprinters make the best bobsledders. And where are you going to find some really fast sprinters? Jamaica. I love it. I love it. You know, the other thing that I love about this movie is that it kind of shows it shows national pride. You know, these guys have so much national pride for this little island, and they're showing so much of their culture and so much of um, just, you know, perseverance and, and loving where you're from and who you are that um, at the end of the movie, they end up earning an enormous amount of respect. You know, so I I really, really enjoyed that. And everything else in the middle is pretty much just a bunch of hilarious bits. You know, there's a whole bunch of little hilarious bits that are in this movie. There's some actors that at the time um, would just perfectly fit the Phyllis movie. 
And, you know, I, I, I still have a really tough time listening to my Malik's Yo, Malik Yoba's Jamaican accent because I feel like he tried really, really hard <laughs> to do that in this movie. But here's the thing: like I'm accustomed to seeing him in New York Undercover, right? So like he's like the Al Bundy of New York Undercover because he's a guy that's just been typecast. Like I can't see him as anything else. You feel what I'm saying? But um. But yeah, man, this this movie is I, I picked it because I think that this is a great, great, great underdog story. Um, you know, just because of everything that goes on. And you know what I mean? First of all, just having a Jamaican bobsled team is, you, you know, it's it's pretty equivalent to having a Dominican soccer team because like we're known for baseball only. You know what I mean? Or a Dominican basketball team because like, you know, they're known for baseball only. So um, this really it, it hit a little close to home, and I thought it was great. I really did. You know, this this is you know I'm probably saying too much. You know what I mean? I should stop talking because other people got to talk. So executive consultant, what did you think about this movie? He's just waiting for me. To speak up. I, I can tell you what I thought about this movie. So I used to watch this movie all the time when I was a kid because I didn't know any better. You know, uh, uh, see back in the, my day kids pay attention there was this cassette player it's called a vhs right um a lot of y'all don't know about it that was very obvious on monday night raw but anyway so you've had a vhs and you would put it in your vcr and this is how i used to go to sleep and there'll always be three movies on this vhs because i used to record it from one movie that i got from blockbuster and put it on another one that's what we that's what we had oh and movie said, dubs and I used to have like three or four movies on there, you know, whatever like that. Cool Runnings was always like the last one. All right. So I'll go sleep and I'll wake up and there it is. There is on this movie. And I'm like, God, I don't know why I keep watching this movie. And I knew why, because the first two movies I liked. That's when I was a kid. I'm a grown ass man now. And you had me watch this shit. So we were over here as normal. And I feel like I told oh. the story. The same story I feel like I've been telling for five years now. I was said, we got to come up with themes. They come up with themes. And then they said, I said, okay, what's the movies from these things? And then they give me crap. Cool runnings? Do I look Jamaican, man? No, I do not. Your accent's you kind of do, though. Were. You kind of do, though. Now, that's to say all three of us look Jamaican. That's kind of do though. I mean, no, the facial features. He does have Jamaican facial features. Johnson, you, know you, you, you picking on that man's nose? Yeah, he got a he got a Jamaican nose, so he could be. You know what I mean? Go play basketball. Look, it's like my... it's like you know, there's certain people. You know, you're only looking at people's colors, but once you start looking at people's facials, facials, then then you see different things. You know what I mean? Because, Mike, you look straight Panamanian, but you probably wouldn't know that. <laughs> straight up. You know what I mean? And Chris looks mad Jamaican, so you never know. Yeah. Long story short. He looks like Safari, actually. You ever seen Safari? You know, this is what he looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, if in case you've been watching since the beginning, about three minutes ago, this man over here was talking. He talked to her about, I don't know, 29 minutes. And he said, I'm perhaps me. I'm talking too much. I should let somebody else talk. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, Vic, that's a damn good idea. That's what they go ahead. Vic said, yeah, let's go ahead. I'll go ahead and talk, he said, consultant. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> like, oh, my God. Great job, Vic. Uh, I can't say that about that. Well, <laughs> He had to step out. <laughs> so he can sure that he doesn't say anything else. Uh, <laughs> Get your ass back in here. <laughs> the bottom line is, switch, switch me and him, please. Or... Do the, you I know, can't. I don't know what's going on here. All right. So I'm watching. I'm like, but you know what? I'm here. I'm a team player. I do my job. My job said you have to go ahead and watch uh, Warm Walking. So I looked it up on Disney Plus. I found Warm Walking and I watch. And when I'm watching this movie, I'm like, it's Warm Walking. Somebody. Oh, this, cool running. Okay. The name of this movie, Warm Walking. Okay. And I'm like, why, why, why did you make me watch this movie? Well, all I want to do is run away. But then I saw a plus. I saw a positive. You ready, Vic? I'm about to give you a compliment. 
because I didn't give Mike this compliment last week. One hour, 36 minutes. I was like, okay, all right, that's a plus. That's a plus. Good job there, Vic. Then the movie played. And I saw John Candy. All right, Vic. I was a big John Candy fan. Don't know why. But I was a big John Candy fan growing up. It was about a plus. Stick around for more after that. <laughs> um, I guess that means it's on me. Um, I never wanted to watch this movie. Um, again, this this movie came out, I believe, in what, like 92, 93, somewhere in there. Some of Jiren High School. You know, uh, that guy, we can't say his name, but I will. R. Kelly was really popular back then. In Chicago, I'm playing, you know, high school basketball and baseball. This was the last thing on my mind was looking at Jamaicans who I thought had fake accents like Dougie Doug. And um, as you just, as you mentioned, Vic, Malik Oyoba, um, this is fresh off of the five heartbeats. So Leon's now Jamaican. I just thought it was unbelievable. Um, today, if this movie was cast, I know we, we talked before on this network about recasting. They wouldn't cast none of these guys in these roles other than maybe John Candy but he's not with us. So his role will be recasted as well because we are now in a smart enough um, and intelligent enough moviegoers. Well, we would complain and people would bitch and moan and they would change it and they would have to put four Jamaicans in this role. It's like I'm watching the show now, Supercell um, on Netflix, really good show. And I'm watching it and I'm like, damn, oh boy from the original or the remake, I'm sorry, of House Party is British. So many British actors are now stealing American black actors' jobs, in my opinion. So black actors, step your game up because the Brits are coming for you. So when I watched this and had to watch this movie, brother, I'm thinking of saying, I don't want to watch this. But again, I say it all the time. It's the beauty to me of Unpopular View Entertainment. Having to watch something that I have never would have watched before that I now got a chance to watch. And I have to say, I was pleasantly enjoying this movie. Um, I have kids. Um, I'm around my kids every day. So for me, I, I carry this childlike, uh, you know, uh, experience in watching certain things and watching this movie. Can I lie? I enjoyed it. I laughed. I got past, once I got past their fake Jamaican accents, I was able to go ahead and dig into the movie. And this theme is underdog stories. Truth be told, Vic, I think you are the only one that has picked a true, really underdog story. And the term underdog is typically, and according to the definition, really just for sports narratives. Okay. And so with that being said, this is, you're right. You got a bunch of dudes from Jamaica who's known to be for, uh, you know, make it current. Usain Bolt-ish and speed. You was in a bobsled, no money to go, no kind of this like that. You know, they're trying to scrape up money. They're being laughed at. Their own people, their own countrymen didn't want them to do this because they thought they would embarrass themselves. And um, the rest is for uh, us to talk about a little bit after this break. All I have for you is a word. Lieutenant, your duty transcends national interests. This is about survival. It seems bold. Bold, I'm fine, but I thought you were going to say nuts. This is where our worlds collide. How would you like to die? Old. You chose the wrong profession. It's not about black. It's not about white. It's about green. I have a business proposal for you, as if you don't mind hustling. What kind of hustle? <laughs> $500, baby, and you can pick my teammate. Give him the chump. You mean play basketball? Hey, pretty man, I got something for you. Shut your anorexic malnutrition tapeworm habit. Overdose Dick Gregory Bahamian diet drinking ass up. Give me my money. I see you hustle. Hey, I never use those goofy white mother. Hey, who you calling a goofy white mother? You, you goofy. 500 divided by two. I only have four words for you. White men can't jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us as we talk cool runnings. Well, warm walkings. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, warm walkings. I just thought that was um, funny. Once I caught it anyway. Once yeah. Once yeah. So, um, you know, like, like I was saying before, this, 
this movie was very interesting. I um I I really enjoyed it. One of the dynamics that I enjoyed was the dynamic of the guy with his father that didn't necessarily approve. A little bevel. Yeah. So, you know, it got to the point where he never pretty he never stood up to his father up to that point where they're they're starting to win. And then all of a sudden his father shows up and tr- tries to strong arm him into leaving. And then they have that conversation right in front of the elevator and the elevator door closes on the father's face and he's just looking down. But the next time you see the father is with a Jamaican T-shirt on, mm-hmm. um, at, you know, cheering on his son. So, that you know, that whole situation, I thought, was just interesting because sometimes you just got to follow what you believe. You know what I mean? Now, the other scene that I thought was interesting was when Malik Yoba was, was you know, giving him the pep talk in the bathroom and putting that battery in his back. And then all of a sudden he was ready to go out and fight the white guys and just do all of this stuff, right? But then, but then he got he just got touched a little bit, and he and then he just came right back into reality. Like, all right, let me chill. But then Malik Yoba showed up. Like, what happened? Pop off. But um, and nothing ended up did happening. But still, like that that whole scene was just interesting. Like, because all of those guys needed to find their confidence in one way or another, and they did that. Um, you know, they didn't win the gold, they didn't win the medal, but at the end of the day, like, and, and they, they unfortunately crashed at the end, but, um, you know, they, they ended up walking out and earning everybody's respect and, you know, and earning <clears throat> the, basically the slot to be there, the respect to be there because, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's best to just drown out the noise and do your best. And I think that's that's one of the messages that this movie gives you because, you, you know, the gold isn't everything. Um, I thought they were going to just do, you know, like normal things do and then have them win and be a big rah-rah for Jamaica. But no, that's not what they told the story that they told him. Because John Candy, his character was also interesting because he was the coach of the team, but he was already known as a cheater. Put weights in the bobsled, like um 15 years before and then um pretty much cheated to to win got his gold medals got his gold medals um removed and all that and mind you like at first i thought it was going to be one of those things like um you know like other movies where like when the team finds out something dramatic about the coach that they're all of a sudden they're getting ready to leave the coach and i thought that was going to happen but it didn't you know they were very loyal to him and um they stuck by him even though they found out negative shit you know and then even when they found out why he cheated i think that's one of the reasons that's one of the things that pretty much led to the whole moral of the story like look you try your best but winning isn't everything um you know sometimes it's the only thing like people say some people say but it isn't it isn't everything you know because at the end of the day they didn't win but they earned everybody's respect and an opportunity to go back the following in four years. So, um, you know, I, I, like I said in the beginning, if I had kids, this is something that I would definitely show to my kids, especially like if they're active and then competing and things like that. Cause you know, you can't, you can't win them all. You try to, but you can't win them all. And if you do fantastic, you got, you just need more trophy space, but you know, anyway, I got to the point of talk too much again. So I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> That would be you, Chris. Anytime now. How, Adding, did, how did it lay on me? Because you were next. All right, so. I mean, he didn't say it, but that's what he went in the first. Warm walkings. Gets a thumbs down for me. Damn, we just went straight there? Because. <laughs> no. It's not no. funny. No, no, no. It's not entertaining. Where's it's the not line? interesting. It was made for this? Not funny, not entertaining, not interesting. I don't buy this. It's a, it's a rouge coming. However. Mm-hmm. 
knew it. Cool Runnings gets a thumbs up. Because when I watched it, even though I was trying to watch it and I did not want to, let me tell you a true story. When we picked this theme and these two gave me their what movies they're doing, I was going, I was fully, full. you look at my eyes, fully prepared to give two of the biggest thumbs down I can give in my life. Saw Straight Out Compton, surprised me. I watched Cool Runnings. I started to get goosebumps and wanted them to make it. I haven't seen this movie in a while, so I, I couldn't remember how it ended. I actually was cheering for them. That amazed me. I was impressed. I can't believe I liked it, but I liked it. It gets a thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up for me as well. Um, I didn't want to like it, didn't want to watch it, had no interest in watching it, never wanted to watch it, but I found myself pausing it and going and talking to my wife in the back room and saying, yo, this is really good. Like, and I remember when he got picked, I said, who the hell would pick cool runnings? And our money in my household was on Chris. We were shocked, Vic, you know, that you, uh, I thought this was definitely a Chris pick. You know, he picked ghost dad for heaven's sakes. I had to watch that golf or off a movie, by the way, I think I gave it a thumbs up by the way. Um, but <laughs> watching this, I was like, once you get past the accents, it was funny. It was a heart, you know, heartfelt story, especially like you said, when the, the bobsled, are you wondering when the, what's going to happen with this bobsled? Because it was borrowed. They said, I got a piece of crap when it's a practice sled and you know, how that was going to turn out. And they had race so good. You just knew something was going to happen. And when, whenever I'm watching a real movie or a movie like this, I always pause it and go, is this a true story? Cause I don't remember this. When I watched the Olympics religiously, at least I thought I did. Um, and because I had never heard this story in real life, and it is loosely based, as most of these things are, on a true story. This really did happen as far as a Jamaican bobsledding team. And I, I thought, like you said earlier as well, Vic, um, it wasn't John Candy's best work, you know, uh, go back to Barf, uh, Spaceballs, my sport's bigger than yours. You know, great work in that in that movie right there. They're making a Spaceballs too. Why? I don't know. It's like 40 years too late. Um, 45 years do. too late. That's what they do. That's what they do, right. Um, but for me, this movie... It had me laughing. It had me having emotion. I want to see them win. I felt sorry for them when they had to. And I love the fact, as a sports guy who loves sports movies, when they when the sled broke, they got up and they carried that sled across the finish line. And to me, that just makes this 100. You know, if you say, if I can give it more than one thumbs up, it would have more than one thumbs up. I'm glad you made me watch this movie, Vic. I'm going to make my children watch this movie because that's what I do as a dad. And so thumbs up for me. Your thoughts on your movie, which we already know it's a thumbs up because you picked it. So, <laughs> well, I wanted to have a, 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 a movie theme, movies I did not like. I think we already did that. And we ended up still liking them later on. <laughs> your take, Vic, on you. Well, <clears throat> um, like I said, like I pretty much picked it because I wanted to see it. I had never seen it, like, <laughs> okay. at least fully, outside of like clips and things like that. Um, and I'm glad that I did because I all this time I thought that they just walked away with the gold. You know what I mean? I didn't expect that last scene where they're just walking the sled across the finish line and gaining everybody's respect. Um, because I in my opinion, that's probably a better ending. Um, and especially if it's a true story, if that if this is exactly what happened. So yeah, thumbs up all day. You know, what's funny about this, I thought that Friday Night Lights was one of the first movies I thought that actually had the primary um, important people that the movies lose in a movie. And then I saw Cool Runnings and that's just made before Friday Night Lights. So there's a lot of stories out there where the movie can be good. It's about that team. You're thinking that team's going to win and they do not win. Everything is not take the Karate Kid approach, which, by the way, Cobra Kai is coming back. Cannot wait. Get us about it. Here, they didn't hear no bell. I didn't hear no bell. That's still in there too. You know what I mean? Yo, that's my. You know I love Rocky Five, so that's that's my line right there. Oh wow, yeah. I, I love Rocky you, Five. You, you find the ring. My ring's outside. You said my ring's outside. Yeah. <laughs> then, mm. And again, he hit him and he knocked him into the scepter bus. We did a Rocky Five review, y'all. Go ahead and watch that. We out mm -hmm. here, y'all. Hope you enjoy Cool Runnings. Peace. Looking for a sponsor for the first Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> Their dream was to compete in the Olympics. <laughs> but they chose a sport <laughs> they knew nothing about. 
This is the true story of four unlikely athletes. How about I beat your butt right now? How about I draw a line down the middle of your head so it looks like a butt? Who weren't prepared for what they were about to face. It's a beautiful afternoon in Calgary. And they took the whole world along for the ride. Woo! Used to follow your dreams. Follow, follow your, your dreams. dreams. You know, sometimes a trailer will make a movie 